Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder. I thank you so very much for being with me as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. I want to thank you so much for all of the, of the, the tweets, the emails, the texts I get. I want to give a special shout out to my brothers and sisters in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, who are following me, uh, the powerful points to, follow, to ponder. Hoptown, Hoptown. God bless Hoptown. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Well, we continue our theme uh, today on friendly fire, and friendly fire is the hurts we receive from friends, relatives, people who we're close to. Listen to me, sometimes the closest do the mostest. And when the pain comes from a friend, when the betrayal is from someone that we love and trusted, when the molestation comes from a relative, someone we believed in, when somebody is taken from something from us, and it's somebody who is close to us, that exacerbates the pain. That's friendly fire. And we're talking about how to survive friendly fire. And we're looking at some of the people in the Bible who experienced friendly fire because they were hurt, but they were hurt by people who were supposed to be close to them. There's a wonderful funeral story in the Bible, which is so powerful. And it's only powerful when you know the background of the story. And it's in Genesis chapter 25, verses beginning with verse 7. And this is what it says. Abraham, we know who Abraham is, the father of the faith, lived for 175 years. And he died at a ripe old age, having lived a long and satisfying life. He breathed his last and joined his ancestors in death. His sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in a cave of Machpelah. I want you to see who buried him in the cave of Machpelah. It was his sons, Isaac and Ishmael. They came together to bury their father. Now, I'm not surprised that, that Isaac is there. I'm not surprised because the lineage, Abraham's lineage, went through Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am surprised that Ishmael is there because Ishmael was mistreated by his own father. Ishmael's father was not a good father. And you would think that because of what his father Abraham did to Ishmael and especially to Ishmael's mother, Hagar, that instead of going to honor his father Abraham in death and actually doing it with his brother, who is his rival, Isaac, uh, speaks volumes about how we can overcome friendly fire. Now, what was the friendly fire? Let me explain what's going on. You remember that God promised Abraham and, I, and Sarah that God was going to bless them with the child. But Sarah was barren. So what Sarah did was that Sarah conscripted one of Abraham's slaves from Africa, from Egypt, uh, whose name was Hagar. And she became the surrogate. Uh, Abraham, uh, Sarah, it was her idea, said to Abraham, take Hagar, impregnate her, and I will have a child who is a surrogate child through Hagar. Now, what's Abraham going to say? What, what is a man going to say when his wife is going to say, go have sex with this pretty African woman? What would most men say? Well, it was a mistake. <laughs> and it was a mistake because uh, Sarah got ahead of God. She took matters into her own hands. And we always make mistakes when we take matters in our own hands and get ahead of God. Sarah was going to become pregnant, but not at Sarah's time, on Sarah's timetable, but, but on God's timetable. And at the age of 90, and Abraham at the age of 100, 100, Sarah becomes pregnant, which causes a problem. At one time, Hagar and Ishmael, the surrogate son, was considered to be the heir. But now we got Isaac. So what are we going to do with Hagar? What are we going to do with Ishmael? They have to take a back seat. 
So knowing that background, listen to this story again in uh, Genesis chapter 21. Maybe you've heard it before, but let's listen to it again. Verse nine, it says, but Sarah saw Ishmael, the son of Abraham and her Egyptian servant, Hagar, making fun of her son, Isaac. So she turned to Abraham and demanded, get rid of the slave woman and her son. He is not going to share the inheritance with my son, Isaac. I won't have it. This upset Abraham very much because Ishmael was his son. But God told Abraham, do not be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever servant tells you, for Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. But I will also make a nation of the descendants of Hagar's son because he is your son too. So Abraham got up early the next morning, prepared food and a container of water, strapped them on Hagar's shoulder. Then he sent her away with her son and she wandered aimlessly in the wilderness of Beersheba. Let's stop here right here. I just want to keep this scripture on the screen. Let me kind of unpack what's going on. So Sarah puts pressure on her husband, Abraham, get rid of Ishmael and Hagar, the African woman. And it's really Sarah's fault because Sarah got ahead of God. Isaac is born. When Isaac is born, then uh, Ishmael and Hagar get demoted. And she says, get rid of Hagar. Get rid of Ishmael. Ishmael will not share in the inheritance with my son, Isaac. And guess what he does? He puts Ishmael and Hagar out with very meager resources, prepared some food and a container of water. Now, how long are you gonna last with just a container of water out there in this desolate, this hot, desolate desert? How long can you survive? What? This is Abraham at his worst. This is Sarah at her worst, just insecure and selfish. Well, look at what happens. Verse 15, when the water was gone, and that didn't take long, they're in the desert. She put the boy in the shade of a bush. Then she went and sat down by herself about 100 yards away. I don't want to watch the boy die. So she bails out. She checks out. She said as she burst into tears. So Hagar has what? She's already said he's going to die. But God said, I'm going to make... Uh, Ishmael's descendants a great nation. He already said that to Abraham. But she's already made the conclusion, Hagar is, has made the conclusion that there's no hope. I've given up. The good news is this, is that while Hagar has given up, God has not. While Hagar has lost hope, God has not lost hope. Look at verse 17. It says, but God heard the boy crying. That's interesting. What it's saying is that God heard the boy crying, but but Hagar did not hear the boy crying. Or if she did hear the boy crying, she had she had basically shut off her emotions towards the boy because she had lost hope. It says, but God heard the boy crying and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. Like, girl, well, get it together. Pull it together. Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. And look at what else it says. Go to him and comfort him. For I will make a great nation from his descendants. And guess what his, who his descendants are? His descendants are the Muslims. So Christians, Muslims, and Jews both are uh, the descendants of Abraham. Uh, Muslims through Ishmael, Christians and Jews through Isaac. I'm going to make Ishmael a great nation. Then God opened Hagar's eyes. Watch this. Open her eyes. She saw a well full of water. Now notice it says God opened her eyes. It didn't say that God put the well there. The well was already there all along, but she could not see the well because she was so caught up in her grief and her, and her hopelessness. And one thing that if you if you're not careful, grief and hopelessness can blind you to resources that are already there. God opened her eyes and she saw a well that was there all alone. And God provided for Hagar. 
God provided for Hagar. Verse 20 says, and God was with the boys. He grew up in the wilderness. He became a skillful archer and he settled in the wilderness of Paran. His mother arranged for him to marry a woman from the land of Africa. So he was an African and he married a woman. But don't forget Egypt is in Africa. Now you would think, would you not, that after Abraham did this to Hagar and his own son, hurt his own son. And many of you know what it means to be abandoned by your family, not have your father there. For, to, to, all he does is give you a little bread and a little water, not enough to sustain you. You would think that after being so mistreated, that after the death of Abraham, that the only person who would be there at the funeral to bury Abraham would be Isaac. But the good news is this. Is that somehow Ishmael was able to rise above his pain. And I'm sure everyone was shocked when Ishmael walked in there at the funeral. And again, Genesis chapter 25 and verse 7 says this as we close. Abraham lived up for 175 years and he died at a ripe old age, having lived long and satisfying life. He breathed his last and joined his ancestors in death, his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave at Machpelah. Somehow Ishmael was able to survive the friendly fire of his own father who hurt both him and his mother. And he was able to be successful anyway. And he was able to reconcile with Isaac and to somehow honor his father. Listen to me. There's no such thing as perfect parents. We as parents make mistakes and you will make a mistake as a parent. But the key is, is not to allow the friendly fire to make you bitter. There's only one letter difference between bitter and better, and that's the letter I. Bitter has the letter I in it. And if I get bitter, I can't get better. And what determines if I get bitter it's that letter I, I. Somehow by the grace of God, Ishmael was able to be successful and to forgive, to survive the friendly fire and to reconcile with his brother Isaac. Maybe this is a story that some families need to hear because maybe you're the Ishmael who's been hurt or you're the Isaac and you didn't have anything to do with it. A lot of family mess. Somebody's got to break the family curse. Somebody's got to break the cycle of hatred and resentment that may be in your family. And maybe you need to be the Ishmael who's going to be big enough to say, you know what, I'm the one that's hurt, but I'm the one that's going to forgive. I'm going to be like Jesus who said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And Ishmael became a great nation, not because he had a lot of land or because he had a lot of wealth. What made him a great nation? was because he was a big hearted person who learned how to forgive. And that's what makes you a great person. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Uh, we pray that you will bless those who are suffering from friendly fire and give them the strength that Ishmael had. In Jesus name, amen. Well, thank you so much for being with me for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, contact us here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. We will get back with you. If you need prayer, whatever you need, contact us. We're here to help minister to you. Email us, newstartsclive.org. We've got a staff of people here who would love to talk to you. Sometimes you just need somebody to talk to. So email us, newstart at newstartsclive.org. Thank you for being with me. We'll pick up on this again tomorrow. But until then, look. Go get your, your, your shot. Go get your, your vaccination shot. And don't forget, during COVID-19, stay safe. Get your shot. Stay sane. And don't forget, God is in control. We'll pick up on this tomorrow. See you tomorrow.